I am doing pretty well. Do you remember the first home you bought? Yeah, because I'm still in it. <laughs> oh, that's the only home you've ever bought. That's the only home I've ever bought. Really? So. No desire to move? Uh, in the near future, maybe. Well, I put you in contact with a good realtor. The folks up are professional pride, I'll bet. That's where I'm at. Pete Mergens is with us, so we're going to visit with Pete today about the real estate market, about buying a home. We're going to get some tips. Pete, thanks for having us again today. I really appreciate it. Gordy, thank you. It's my pleasure to share the airwaves with you. Yeah, I think we're going to have a very informative program today because, you know, there are a lot of people that buy a house, like John. He's only bought one in his life. Me, I've only purchased one house in my life. That's the rarity, though, right? It is. It is. I think, um, and I don't know the exact average, but I think it's about every uh, five to seven years people typically will either move on, uh, move up, or, or even make a lateral move. So that uh, it is it is rare uh, in this day and age to to be in the same house. Yep. Pete, with Professional Pride Realty, you started this how many years ago? Uh, just six years ago that the company was formed. A couple of years ago, Business of the Year for the Chamber, and I know you have a lot of pride in that, and it kind of fits the name. It does. The you know, we're not a franchised company. The the name is something that I created, and pride and professionalism are some things that I think are pretty important to uh, to the process. Yeah, for sure. Because, well, I was sharing the story with you when I first bought my home. I was, I don't know, 31, 30, somewhere in there, and I didn't know anything about buying a house. Well, I'll tell you, uh, even, you know, I have my own stories, and I won't go into great detail, but uh, have made uh, plenty of mistakes on my own. I bought and sold several houses before becoming a realtor and, and uh, really had some uh, preconceived notions about realtors in the business. And um, in the end, it's it's what caused me to get into the business. I sold my, uh, my uh, uh, home before I moved to Northfield for sale by owner and uh, was sure that I wasn't going to use one of those people because anybody could sell their house. <laughs> and I learned very quickly that, guess what, um, there was a lot more details and it was a lot more complicated. And I was very fortunate to have met a few agents that ended up showing my house. And uh, there were just a couple agents that I thought to myself, wow, now there's somebody that I would use because they were just very informative and truly wanting to help. And that's what caused me to go into the business. You thought, I can help people with this. Yep, without a doubt. Um, it's personally what I like the most is, you know, meeting new people and finding a way to help them. Uh, really what we are as realtors are, are uh, you know, keepers of the knowledge of the business um, and the process. Having people follow a specific process to the finish line is what a successful real estate transaction is. You want it to seem seamless to the buyer. Exactly, exactly. Taking the guesswork out of it, that's the that's the hardest thing. Um, it certainly is possible to do it on your own. Um, uh, I just don't think people realize what uh, actually goes into uh, the process of selling a home or buying a home for that matter. Yeah, I shared with you earlier that when I purchased my home, it was for, for sale by owner, but in hindsight... I would have had somebody in my corner, so to speak. Yep, and that's exactly what we do. Um, you know, whether it be uh, preparation of the property, uh, properly pricing the home, which is a big deal. I mean, that's that's the biggest part of it. Okay, we're going to touch on some of that. That's a great teaser there. Thanks, Pete. I appreciate it. All right, we're at Professional Pride Real. And Professional Pride Realty is owned by Pete Mergens. He is with us this morning on AM Minnesota getting some tips on purchasing or selling a home. And again, Pete, thanks for having us up here at Professional Pride Realty today. Well, Gordy, it's always my pleasure. Yeah, I always enjoy it. Now, you were touching on something before we hit the market update, a little teaser. Yeah, um, you know, I was just talking about the benefits of using a realtor. Um, and it's really our knowledge of the process. The process, whether you're selling a home or buying a home there's a 
a very definitive process to get you uh, to your goal and, and get you there in, in an efficient and smooth manner. And, um, you know, just speaking a little bit to that process, we were talking about the, the preparation of your property. Um, you know, a, a, a correctly prepared property uh, might include little things. You take the winter months that we're in here right now, and a lot of people don't realize that keeping your driveway shoveled and your steps plowed, and uh, or excuse me, shoveled, your driveway plowed and your steps shoveled. Let's try that. Sure. Um, but keeping them clean and clear and free of ice so when people are walking up to the door, they're, they're finding it nice and easy to get to the door. Um, you know, keeping your thermostat set at a very comfortable temperature. Little things like that. Um, keeping your windows and blinds open on a beautiful sunny day like we have today shows your house in a different light. Um, little things like that that begin the process of selling your house. You know, those seem like simple things, but it's things that we do every day that people don't realize because they don't sell houses every day. Right. We, and we do. I would assume you have to, you know, wash the walls, make things clean, right? Get rid of all any cobwebs, that sort of thing. You bet. In in some cases, uh, you know, sometimes a house needs a complete uh, wash down, and uh, we have people in place that we recommend uh, different contractors to do different things, and and um, these are all again part of of preparing you to sell your house. And then the bottom line is the bottom line, right? I mean, if I'm selling my home, I want to get as much as I can for it. I'm not going to get that much if it's really messy and d- d- dirty, and I'm that, not going to get as much. You know, it, it can make as much of a five or ten thousand dollar difference in the price of your house in what you receive for the sale of your house. Um, to me, that that's the part that people don't really get right off the bat. You're living there. You're you're enjoying your house on a daily basis, and you maybe don't realize there's cobwebs in the corner, or all of your uh, uh, mop boards uh, are you know a little bit of dust accumulates right. on yep. them or whatever. But in, if they are cleaned up and taken care of, um, it really shows to that buyer. That I mean, the, seems like common sense, but probably. I mean, you deal with people all the time that probably don't realize that. Well, and like I said, I, people are busy right now. They're raising kids and, and um, you know, dealing with, with work and things of that nature. I, I think they just maybe overlook some of those details. And that's what you like to do is take care of the details for people. It is, without a doubt. And I think any, any realtor, hopefully any realtor that you uh, work with here at Professional Pride Realty does pay attention to those deal, details. That's by design. I'm sure when you hire people, you make it known that that's what you expect, right? It is. It is, without a doubt. Those are things that are important to me, and and uh, I want to make sure that when you do work with our company, that no matter who it is you're working with, you're getting a good quality person. And we're at Professional Pride Realty in Northfield. We're just off Highway 3, right across from the, the post plant. Yep. Yep, a long-standing building over there. In fact, I think it's even on the historic uh, uh, National Register of yeah, Historic Places. Yeah, I, I believe so. That would make some sense. In future shows, we're hoping to, to highlight some things like that. But today we're talking about professional pride realty and getting some tips on how to purchase or sell your home. Obviously, the same is true for purchasing as it is for selling, I would guess. Mm-hmm. It is, without a doubt. You know, purchasing... Um, uh, again, there's a, a very clear process, and it starts with, uh, you know, finding uh, the correct bank that uh, best suits you or best suits your needs and uh, making sure that you're pre-qualified before we even go out and start looking to buy is one of the most important steps there are. Yeah. So I need to do that before I contact you. Absolutely. Or we certainly have local banks that we would recommend to people. I have to know what my budget is. You bet. And I think part of um, what happens every day with the uh, advent and success of the Internet in the last uh, 15 or 20 years, uh, I I think some of that gets lost. People feel they can just go online and and look at homes and hopefully go see it and buy it. And while that is part of the process, it's very, very important that you are put in the right um, 
uh, frame of mind so you can have success in purchasing that home that you're finding. Landscaping, is that important? It is. Uh, in the in the sale of any property, your curb appeal is it's half the battle. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I have a, a, a buyer in a car and we pull up to a property and it might be a... Uh, a gem of a home on the inside but maybe not as well cared for on the outside and the client will already kind of pass judgment on it just based on the curb appeal and I've seen the opposite of that where the exterior was just very well manicured and just beautiful and the interior was not as nice but um, the curb appeal in fact put that deal together meaning the people just fell in love with what the house looked like, even though structurally it might not have been that good. So I would say landscaping is very, very important. Yeah, I see a a few times these uh, home improvement shows. Actually, they're shows about people that flip houses. Yep. You know, they purchase a fixer-upper, they fix it up, and then they sell it. Yep, very popular shows. So if I specifically am looking for a fixer-upper, I need to tell you that when I'm looking to buy, right? Absolutely. And we have, <laughs> with the advent of those shows, we have a lot of people that come to us with that in mind. Oh, sure. Uh, interestingly enough, there aren't that many of those available. Uh, you know, you're kind of competing with a, a true investor who does it for a living. Um, and so, you know, those are some generally sought-after properties, particularly in Northfield. Now, obviously, I've never sold a home because... The only home I've ever purchased I'm living in right now. But I would assume that when you do open houses and that sort of thing, you need to have them at convenient hours for people that are going to look. Absolutely, and a lot of that is by design. Um, you know, you typically try and hold open houses on a Sunday afternoon or sometimes a Saturday afternoon. Um, you know, I, I think we're finding open houses are, are having less of an impact because of the internet, because people can see quite a bit on the internet. But the one thing I would always encourage people to do is to get out and look. Um, open houses are a good opportunity to actually kind of touch and feel that property where you can't do that on the internet. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine purchasing a home solely on the internet. I'd want to see the place. Absolutely. It, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you another little hint or clue, but. Um, as an example, I use a professional photographer, and a lot of realtors do. And that's by design, because when you see on the Internet a uh, property that is presented well and looks great, uh, it causes you to want to come out and see it. I've also seen the opposite, where there are homes that don't maybe have the best pictures on the Internet, and they're really nice homes in person. So I think it's really important that people understand to get out and see these properties is is really to their benefit. Is to be sincere, you can't um, you can't judge a book by its cover. That's the best way to put That's it. That's for sure. Now you have a website here. We do. It is uh, www.professionalpriderealty.com. And the phone number here at the office is five zero seven six six three one one zero zero. That's correct. 507-663-1100. You put all your homes up on your website. Yep. Not just all the homes that we have listed, but we have the entire multiple listing service. And so it is, uh, uh, you can find any home that we have uh, or that is listed on the MLS in this area. Oh, fantastic. So what you were talking about, so how many different pictures do you take of a home that are in there? Well, we can put as many as 24 pictures on any given listing. Um, so uh, there, there, that number has uh, grown dramatically uh, in recent years, and so you really can get a lot of uh, information about a house on there. If there are outbuildings or uh, additional land and things of that nature, you can get a picture of now. And so it does create a, a good uh, opportunity for a consumer to go online and find out a lot about the house. But as we alluded to before, Seeing it in person is the best thing you can do. Oh, yeah, it's a whole different ball game. A whole yep. different ball game. You can cover up some things in a photo that you can't when you... <laughs> well, we uh, we do uh, chuckle sometimes when we look at listings. Uh, I 
can't tell you how many times you look at the pictures and you think what a wonderful property that is and you get there and just out of the the picture view of the house is a you know something not as pleasing uh that were was conspicuously hidden yeah like maybe a waste incinerator plant right next door or something like that those things do happen but um you know again the more savvy person can uh look at uh, google google earth now and they can go online and get an overhead view of what's uh, surrounding that property and i think uh i mean i i think i've come to know you a little bit pete i think you're a straight shooting kind of guy if there's problems with the property you're going to let the people know right absolutely and that that's our job uh, you know nothing builds uh, a, a customer base better than really taking care of your customers and your clients uh, because that's how we get re- repeat business and how we get referrals so if we do are doing our best and keeping their best interest in mind the business will always come with and it's best to just be up front about something, you know, the garbage disposal doesn't work or whatever. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, people don't realize that uh, realtors are bound uh, by law, in fact, to disclose any pertinent information that they are aware of. So even if there's a homeowner that, that uh, says that, you know, gosh, I have this uh, garbage disposal that doesn't work, but Pete, please don't t- say anything. We can't do that. We have to, and so we have to let our, our sellers know right up front that if we're aware of anything, we have to disclose that information. Yeah. Right on Action Month was in January. We did a, a show, an AM Minnesota program on that with folks from the Rice County Department of Health. And if I remember correctly, there hasn't been a law that requires people to do radon improvements at the point of sale. Is that right? Or? Uh, yes. Uh, to, to be clear about that, there's a requirement to disclose whether radon has been tested for or not. Okay. So there's no requirement to install a system or anything of that nature. But uh, right in the disclosures now, and, and there's in fact a supplement to the disclosure that the uh, uh, Minnesota Association of Realtors has included with their forms that uh, does an excellent and thorough job explaining radon. And so there's a very simple question. Have you had a radon test performed, yes or no? Um, And so the majority of people have not. Um, The new energy code has changed. Uh, So most new construction now has um, um, a radon system installed in the house. Uh, Typically it is a um, passive system, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't include a fan. That would be the uh, difference between the two systems. So in other words, all the plumbing has been run. And so we actually find out, um, and myself included, I have a home that was built just a, a year or two ago that was under the new guidelines. And I assumed incorrectly that I had uh, little or no radon because I was uh, you know, following the building code. We actually had our home tested here just recently, and the number was off the charts. So we had a fan installed in our passive system and made it an active system. And now our radon is back down to a respectable level. So you'd probably be in the camp that I'm in that says, you know, they should make this a requirement. I mean, we're in the hotbed of radon here in our part of the country. We are, without a doubt. You know, my feeling is what they did was the right thing to do. In other words, not to force people to install systems because, um, you know, there are plenty houses that don't have a radon issue. Um, I do think it's good to make the public aware and let them decide. So oftentimes I will, and it's just my opinion, but I will instruct my sellers to, um, you know, it's up to them. You know, go get it tested now or take the chance and not test because it's possible that a buyer will not ask for it to be tested. But to me, I think everybody should know whether they have radon in their house or not. So why not go get the test? Rice County, as you uh, alluded to, they have a free test kit yep. that can be picked up. And uh, you can test it yourself and and know right then and there whether you have radon in your house or not. And I would think everybody would want to know. I would agree. So we solved that problem. <laughs> We've got another guy that just sat down in a chair over here. We do. Who is this guy? This is Mr. Todd Bornhauser. (laughs) 
from the Northfield Chamber of Commerce. He's your next door neighbor. He is, and a good neighbor he is. Wow, Todd, you're a good neighbor. I am. It's kind of like Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, but we'll call it Mr. Pete's well, neighborhood, and you just I like, never know who's I like knocking the, at the door. I do like the fact that you're well wearing falcon green here today. Todd. Well, you know what? I am rooting for the uh, Falcons to uh, win their hockey game. So yeah. um, they're playing Austin tonight. They're playing Austin tonight. So I would love love to see them win. Uh, of course, I'd love to see my daughter and the Northfield Raiders win even more tonight. Well, so. of course, yeah, they play tonight too. I forgot about that. Yes, section get, playoffs start tonight. So. Albert Lee at your place, right? Yes, they yes they are. So we're we're excited and. Uh, Looking forward to... Uh, Pete's a big hockey fan, too. You know, he's got a hockey stick right in his office. Uh, that's usually when he, when I walk in the door, that's usually what comes swinging right afterwards. No kidding. Yeah, keep out the rodents out of the, uh, out of the office. Well, he just said that you were a good neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking you have something you want to get the word out on here. I just want to, you know, uh, uh, we're having our home and uh, garden show coming forth in... Uh, on Saturday, April 8th, and our event is sponsored by Professional Pride Realty. So every chance I get sure. to be able to sing uh, uh, Pete's praises and his support of chamber events uh, is most appreciated. So we're, we're really excited. We've got both of our center ice sponsors sold this year, So um, and we're filling up the boost fast and furious so it should be the biggest ever and so it's uh with the support of 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 uh chamber members like professional pride that make this this event a great success for for our residents of northfield and the surrounding area as well up here for the boys game here last saturday i believe it was and saw the professional pride realty sign at center ice in fact my picture probably has it in it fantastic yes so. Of the game up on our on our website, kdhlradio.com. Boy, your boys and girls, both very good teams. They really are in, in probably the worst ice arena in Minnesota. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I, I would I would go that far. I've 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 been to a lot over Have my years. Have you been years. to Winona? What? Have you been to Winona? I've been to Winona, yes. And you think it's worse than Winona? Oh yes, by far. You do? Yes. Have you ever walked in one of those locker rooms? Well, most of the most of the locker room. rooms at the Northfield Arena are half the size of this room. So oh, you okay. try to stick twenty boys or twenty girls into you know you need three locker rooms to be able to to be able to to have. You what know, was that? One of those locker rooms was the old bathroom. Oh, okay. I haven't been to the locker rooms so. And then the other the other major major problem of that arena is is uh, from a from a really safety. Um, uh, handicap, you know, I, I'm surprised that um, an elderly person hasn't killed themselves trying to walk in and out of that arena, up the steps. It's, it is the most inaccessible, um, dangerous uh, setup there is that I've seen. Now, you know, I, th- th- you know, there have been worse second arenas that we have played toilet bowl games in over the years <laughs> with uh, with with the boys and girls. But as far as a main arena, I'm not sure there's one that's worse out there. We're fortunate to have one, but I mean, it, and you've made some major improvements a couple of years back. And you've made some structural, you know, some uh, some safety improvements on there, and you've made some. Uh, Improvements as well as as for ice making capabilities and some of that, but you know you you have you're just limited with what you have right now. So not only are the hockey teams good, your boys and girls basketball teams are good too. Yeah, so really hot that this year of sports activities, and that goes down the road. There's also some very what we would call the minor sports that are out there as sure. well that have done very very well. So yeah, gymnastics, wrestling. I've been told you're going to really have a good wrestling team here in the future. I have a great uh, uh, dance team as well as as well. So uh, I know our Lisa Peterson, our director of tours. Her daughter's on that team, so really great success. Maybe Alpine we, ski. Maybe we can get some of the teams to come over here for the show. I think that might be interesting. Yeah. So, and the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, I also sit on the committee with the Northfield Beyond the Yellow Ribbon, and we're going to have an omelet breakfast fundraiser on Sunday, February nineteenth, from eight thirty a.m. to twelve thirty p.m. at the Eagles Club. Located on 304 Water Street. So it's $10 for adults and $5 for youth. And all of that money goes back into the 
uh, be on the yellow ribbon uh, coffers that then we can use to help um, servicemen and their families when they have needs. Um, it's a great it's a great cause. We're so excited to be. I think we're probably the last community to become a be on the yellow ribbon, but we're very, very excited, and we have um, some great support. So I wanted to mention that as well. If you if you're looking for uh, the you know the Eagles do a, a great omelet breakfast, it's probably one of the best that I've had, and um, so it can help raise money as well. You just made me hungry. Thanks, Todd. Well, that's my job. Appreciate so. that very much. So okay. I'm I'm Good. done, and so I'll give the mic right back to Pete here. So. Well, we're about out of time, so. We'll be back in a couple of weeks, I know, and you'll be sitting over here in this conference room, this great conference room of professional pride realty, and thanks for stopping over, Todd. Well, thank you for allowing me to sneak in the door. So. There's even more stuff we had to, we were going to touch on in the real estate. We can do that in future shows. Thanks, Pete. Appreciate it very much. Thanks, Gordy. My pleasure. You bet. That's Professional Pride Realty Program here at the Professional Pride Realty Office in Northfield on KDHLAM Faribault, Minnesota. Thanks, Gordy.